Hello you legendary people. Welcome to or welcome back to Lauren's Legends. Today's video is the harrowing tale of Deborah Kylie's gruesome survival of being stranded in a small dinghy for five days and having to feed one of her friends to a shark to survive herself. This story is one that shows deep strength through the worst imaginable circumstances. Sit back and relax. We are diving right in. Deborah already had many years of experience when it came to crewing yachts, and she was a confident sailor, which that is pretty cool. Props, girl. When she was 23, she got her big break sailing in the 70,000 kilometers around the world race known as the Ocean Race. In 1981, she became the first American woman to actually complete the event. After this, she had many companies trying to hire her to crew their yachts, and the following year, she had accepted a job to crew an 18-meter yacht called the Trashman. This yacht needed to be transferred from Maine to the new owners in Florida. This was an exciting gig for her to transport this yacht while being able to take some time and enjoy herself on the trip. She put together a crew consisting of herself as the captain, then two sailors, Brad Canova and Mark Adams. She also let John Lippeth and his girlfriend Meg Mooney tag along. They set off on their six day trip from Maine on a gorgeous day, the perfect kind of day to have an adventure. The first day went swimmingly well with everyone getting tans and enjoying themselves but by the second day, they began to encounter trouble. An extreme Atlantic storm blew quickly in and began battering the trash man with 110 kilometers per hour winds and 30 feet waves. Storms could come up in this area and build very quickly, and the crew had not been prepared for this catastrophe. The crew had been enjoying themselves earlier that afternoon and a heavily intoxicated John lay asleep at the wheel who had been the current captain of the ship. They would often take shifts so others could get rest. Deborah was violently awoken to the terrified screams of her crew and freezing cold water rushing into her cabin. In just seconds, the entire situation turned critical. At this time, the yacht was off the coast of North Carolina, and this area has hundreds of years of history of ships going down, and the trashman's fate was now the same as its predecessors. The yacht began to sink very quickly, and the entire crew's only option was to jump off throwing themselves into the sea. In all of the chaos, Mark was able to think quickly and was able to grab a small dinghy and inflate it while he was jumping into the water. He screamed as loud as he could above the waves and the howling winds to the others. They were able to swim to him and hold on. Deborah would later recall, we're all gathered around the rubber Zodiac dinghy and I remember watching the trash man as the last little foot of her mask slipped under the water and it was the most devastatingly lonely feeling I've ever had in my life. She was later asked what she was holding on to and she replied, my sanity, you know, you cling to what you know best and I had been on the ocean for several years and I knew that I had to live from moment to moment and as long as I could stay on that fine line of sanity and insanity, I really believed I could make it. I didn't know whether I was going to wash up on some shore or in fact the Coast Guard would show up, but I knew that I would make it. The crew had been bobbing in the angry ocean and they were all freezing. They decided to try to get out of the water and onto the dinghy. Three of them had been able to get into the little raft, but Brad and Deborah were still in the water and Brad felt a strong nudge on his leg. 
frustrated, scared, and exhausted, he snapped at Deborah to stop kicking him and she yelled back that she wasn't and that he was kicking her. When Brad was later interviewed, he said, I was confused and I thought, you know what? I'm going to look into the water and I am going to see where my legs are and I'm going to stay as far away from her as I can. And it was the most eerie sensation of my life. Hundreds of sharks, they were everywhere. The small crew of five with two still in the water and the other three having a small layer of rubber beneath them were completely surrounded by great white sharks. Deborah and Brad used every bit of strength that they had and pulled themselves up out of the water. She then later said, the minute we got in, there were fins everywhere in the water. And I don't mean like two or three, I mean like 10 to 20, they were everywhere. Once all were in the craft, it quickly dawned on them what was attracting the swarm of predators. Meg had a massive gash in her leg that she had gotten during the violent sinking of the ship. With the blood continuously dripping into the water, the smell was continuing to draw the sharks, making them become more aggressive. One shark bit into the dinghy's bowline, gripping it in its mouth, and it began to pull the terrified crew along. Somehow the dinghy stayed up and it did not flip over. The hungry sharks then started nudging and thrashing their bodies against the boat. With disaster and devastation encompassing them and no land anywhere in sight, Deborah made herself stay focused. She very smartly covered her whole body all over in seaweed for warmth. To keep her brain focused, she continuously prayed. Meg's wound was quickly becoming terribly infected and she was in sheer agony. It was only day three at this time and her leg was turning green and the others could see that the infection was spiraling through her veins under the skin. Deborah knew these were the signs of blood poisoning. Everyone was fighting dehydration and there was nothing they could do about this. The sun was just continuously beating down upon them to make it even worse. The bottom of the dinghy would never stay dry. Their skin was peeling off of them and very painful. As thirsty as they were, Deborah continuously reminded them to not drink the salt water. Salt water is toxic and dehydrates you much faster and will make your kidneys shut down. When Deborah and Brad were in and out of sleep, they believed that John and Mark began to drink the salt water out of desperation. This quickly had them hallucinating and talking under their breaths as if there were somewhere else. John had been quiet, seemingly staring off into the distance at nothing, but then he suddenly snapped his head up, laughing in ecstasy and yelling, land! Before anybody could grab him, he threw himself in the water and started swimming. The others were yelling to him to come back, and then suddenly he let out a horrific blood-curdling scream and was immediately pulled under the water. He never came back up, and then the sea was calm. The crew had no doubt and knew that the sharks were still following them, and they had gotten their first catch. The defeated crew had sat there in helpless silence, unable to process this terrible thing that had just happened. Mark broke the silence. He began incoherently babbling. He said something about going to the shop to buy cigarettes and beer, and he also threw himself into the water. This time, the sharks were excited by what had just happened to John and it had possibly attracted even more. The hungry beast had been right under the raft and they went into a frenzied attack. The water was churning everywhere with them hitting the dinghy, which almost tipped over many times, but somehow stayed upright. Deborah later recalled, it was by far the most terrifying moment in my life. 
Deborah and Brad were now alone with Meg and she was barely alive at this point. They were doing anything they could for her, but they knew she was passing away right in front of them. After that awful day, they drifted to sleep that night and when they awoke, Meg was dead. Through the sorrow they both felt, they also knew that her body had meat and they were starving and severely dehydrated. For a few minutes, Brad considered eating her, but Deborah was able to stay focused and keep her mind straight and she was able to talk him out of it. She reminded him about how infected her body was and about how the infection, pus, and blood was all over the dinghy's floor. She was able to turn his attention to them possibly becoming infected and as much as she didn't want to, they needed to get Meg off the raft. That could possibly get the sharks to also stop following them. As respectfully as they possibly could, they took off her clothes and jewelry to give to her family. This also mentally gave them another thing to survive for. They spent their time praying over her and then they gently pushed her into the water for her water burial. Deborah later said, we tried to sleep so we wouldn't see Meg get eaten by the sharks. At this point, Deborah and Brad had been fighting the elements at sea for five days. They had started out as five friends and now they were the only two left. They had made it this far by trying to keep their minds busy to distract themselves and they decided to clean up the bottom of the raft from what Meg's infection had left behind. Brad had tried to stand to clean it and with being so weak, he accidentally slipped and fell into the shark infested waters. Panicking and desperate, Deborah tried with all of her might to pull him back, but she couldn't. She had nothing left in her and neither did Brad. But in the middle of this happening, Brad saw out of the corner of his eye, a cargo ship. Strength that he had no idea he had washed over him. And somehow he was able to pull himself out as he felt the bumps begin to happen on his legs. The pair screamed as loud as they could and they were waving clothes back and forth and the ship spotted them. They were picked up 140 kilometers south of Cape Lookout. They had almost drifted 150 kilometers off course. Deborah and Brad were so grateful to be saved and received medical attention quickly. They would later learn that a mistake had been made and that the Coast Guard had received a call that said that they had safely moored in Wilmington. The Coast Guard nor anyone else ever went to check it and they were quite surprised when they got a call from a Russian freighter saying they had just rescued two survivors. During an interview with Larry King, Deborah was asked how they were rescued and she said, by a Russian freighter in the middle of the Cold War. Now, how is that for a gift of grace wrapped in very funky paper? This situation understandably left its mark on these two survivors and shifted the course of their lives irreversibly. Deborah would say she could never shake the screams. The image of the frothing water turning red and the sounds of sharks attacking the man who had just been sitting next to her. She could never forget blurting out the Lord's prayer to block out the cries of the man dying in front of her. As long as I kept saying those words, I knew, I knew I was all right, she said. It was my only proof that I had not gone mad. She was also asked what the sharks were like and she replied, Big. I know the rubber Zodiac dinghy was 11 feet long and there was one shark that continued to surface just like a submarine beside of us. And it was about three feet longer than the rubber Zodiac dinghy. And you could just reach out and touch it and you could literally push it away and it would come right back. But they were constantly there. It was as if they were keeping a vigil. Needing to make her second chance at life something to help others, 
Deborah became a motivational speaker. She also wrote several books about her ordeal. She said that writing was a way of working through her horrors in a way that nothing else would help. She was asked if she had a secret to survival. Deborah had this to say, go with your gut. You have got to be mentally, physically, and spiritually prepared. In the back of my new book, there is a survival kit. FEMA says you need to be able to take care of yourself for three days. Take care of yourself for three weeks. Brad also had a change on the outlook of life, but he was able to return to the sea and became a professional yachtsman. This story blows my mind on what these people encountered and went through along the way. And I don't, I like to think that I could stay, you know, focused and keep my priorities right on survival. And I think the most important thing she did was keep her brain going, um, residing prayers and trying to find little things, covering herself in seaweed. But what do you think about this story? And do you think that you could survive out there in a dinghy constantly being pummeled by sharks all around you? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.